Genesis chapter 8. Someone said, getting ready for more in the midst of devastation and losses. Say, say, getting ready for more in the midst of devastation and losses. And it came to pass in the 601st year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from off the earth. And Noah removed the covering of the earth and looked and behold, the face of the ground was dry. And in the second month, on the 7th and 20th day of the month, was the earth dried. And God spake unto Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife, and thy sons, and thy sons' wife with thee. Bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee. Of all flesh, both of fowl and of cattle, and of every gripping thing that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breed upon and in the earth, and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. And Noah went forth, and his sons and his wife, and his sons' wives with him. Every beast, every creeping thing, and every fowl, and whatsoever creeped upon the earth after their kind, went forth out of the ark. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast, and of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savour. The Lord said in his heart, I will not again cause the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of a man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more every living thing as I have done. Why the air three minutes, sea time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. Can we read chapter 9, verse 18 to 19? Chapter 9, verse 18 to 19. Genesis chapter 9, 18 to 19. Can we read together? I want to go. And the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem and Ham and Japheth. And Ham is the father of Canaan. These are the three sons of Noah. And of them was the whole earth overspread. Father, we ask that you open our eyes to see how to get into your mom when everything is collapsing. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Sit down. I want to start by clearly saying there's nothing new under the earth. There's nothing new under the earth. I, so many people are complaining about the economy, the meltdown, the fact that fuel has increased, that gas has increased, that dollar has increased, everything is... And, 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 and I pity those that are on salary because salary is the worst thing that is... How many of you have seen that picture? Fuel has gone high, electricity bill has gone high, but their brother's salary has remained small. The same height year in year out. May the Lord not bless you with that kind of a short reality in Jesus' name. Yeah. You're not saying amen, no. Yeah. I know what it is that I escaped. I almost was like that. Until the Lord had mercy on me. And, and, and this is a reality. As you're looking at it and saying, this is happening. We are hearing about the wars that are happening around the world. And people are shouting, listen, there is nothing new. Oh, that is, that's nothing new. That's nothing new. That's nothing that we are seeing today that people before us did not see. Can I say it again? There is nothing that we are seeing today. The only thing it is our own turn to see it. <laughs> because we are the ones that are on the earth right now. Who is getting what I'm saying? It is our own turn to see it. Tell neighbor, it's our own turn. It's our generation. That was war in the days of our forefathers. That is war now. That will be war after we have come. Except Jesus comes back. Even when Jesus comes back, the last thing that will settle it is what? War. The war of what? I'm it up. So believe it or not, there will be earthquake. There will be floods. There will be fire disasters. Jesus says all these things will happen. And he said, and the end has not yet come. All you shall hear wars and rumors of war. What Jesus was simply saying is, if you are conscious enough, this is the pattern of life. That's the way things happen. And so, the wise and those that are connected to God, what do they do? They begin to go through scriptures. The Bible says, for every word of God is God breathing. He said, it is for direction, for instruction, for encouragement. That the man of God may be thoroughly furnished. So, if you don't look into the word of God, you will not understand how to navigate. Because the word of God is not just word. The word of God is a prophecy of what must happen. And so, with every prophecy, God provides with us a solution. With every story in the Bible, you find a solution to what you're going through. But like I said, the problem is not that the solution is not there. The problem is that we are too busy with other things. We're not seeing the solutions. If it's about what men are doing with women, it's not, it's not new in the Bible. 
It's not new. If you go to Bible, you will see how a king called David went and killed a man and took his wife. I just saw a news article where a lady said, congratulations, my younger sister has eventually taken my husband from me. So, these things are not new. If you are talking about that one, was it not Leah that they took um, um, and gave Jacob? When Jacob was looking for who? It's not new. But you see, the truth is that because you have met it now, you think it's new. It's not new. And Bible try to capture all varieties of human existence and experiences so that if you can look into the Bible, you will know how to live your own life. I saw someone make a very funny statement, stupid statement. He said, because experience is the, is, uh, is the, is the best teacher and he learns from his own mistakes, he's going to make more mistakes so that he can keep learning. But it's stupid to say that some of you are not saying it, but that's the way we live our lives. Let's keep making mistakes so that we can keep learning. If you can learn from the mistakes of, of, of others, you will not make any mistake. Your life will be sweet. So we are looking at the story of Noah. In the midst of devastation and destruction, in the midst of everything going upside down, God looked at a man and God found the man to give more. Can I start from the beginning to build it? Someone say, I'm ready for more. Oh, touch your neighbor. Say, neighbor, are you preparing for your more? Are you preparing for your more? If you are not careful, you read from where we read. I think that's the whole. But I want you to go and read whole, the whole story of, of, of Noah. Number one, how do you begin to get ready for more? When wickedness begins to multiply around you, begin to get ready for more child of God, where you look by your right to see wickedness, you look by your left to see wickedness, and don't complain about it, turn to God and prepare for your mom. When this begins, oh my God, did the Bible not say, arise and shine for your light has come, for gross darkness has come upon the earth. He said, people shall dwell in gross darkness, but he said, but upon you, the light of God shall arise. So when that is a falling away, that is when I will start standing. The Bible says, call not confederacy, that which they call confederacy, and fear not their fear, child of God, when you are seeing the level of wickedness, has increased. It is time to get ready. It is time to turn to God and say, Lord, I know that it's more about to come. You didn't get that. You didn't get that. Can, can I say that again? When you see wickedness employed, the Bible says, and God looked upon the earth and he said, God saw that wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the of his heart was continually evil. Genesis chapter 6 verse 5. And that was when God said, Ha, huh, can I read it in the message translation? God saw that human evil was out of control. People thought evil, imagine evil, 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 evil from morning till night. Does that look at our generation? Does that look like our generation? If you were here in second service, you would have heard of a testimony. A young man that was driving his car and did what carried people, he did not know that they are not just. They are, I don't know what they are, kidnappers or armed robbers that came to steal his car. God delivered him from that. In your office, if you look where there are people that are doing, is it not true that wickedness is the, if you are standing for the truth, you look odd right now. Many of us are compromising in our places of work and businesses because if you don't blend, they will deal with you. In the offices, come to work by nine and write nine. If you want to write when you came, you must wait for those that will come by 10 to come and write 8 o'clock. After they are finished writing their 8, since you want to be a truthful person, you cannot come and write your 9. If you make the mistake of writing 9 by 9 o'clock and lock off those that are coming by 10, who want to write 8, they will deal with you. Am I, am I talking to myself? Am I saying the reality? That's the truth. That's the truth. I am using that one. Those that are accountants, you know how much you are paying. People are sitting on people's files and they are saying until you bring money. And some of them are in church on Sundays. In fact, almost everybody is on church on Sunday wearing good suit and tie and looking very fresh and shouting fire. But on Monday, you enter the office, you become Agadaba Chiruso. If you don't see me, you will not get what you're looking for. Okay, where are the people taking the bribe? I don't know church people. Bribe has been normalized. When wickedness increases, 
It's a sign that God is looking for who to give more. Sorry, um, at least you see I, I, I was wearing coat. And God says, God was sorry that he made man. Ah, how do I put it? The Bible says, Jesus said unto them, lift up your eyes. For you say it's still four months unto harvest. But lift up your eyes and see that the fields are ripe. Lift up your eyes and see that the fields are ripe. And so, when we interpret what is going wrong as sign that things are about to be as, as spoiled, a, someone that is connected to God will begin to see it as God is about to do something new. God never shows up when everything is working. God shows up when nothing is working. I'm not speaking to everybody, but sorry, there are people here who have experienced it. When the doctor's report says you have two days to leave, when everything around you says that you cannot achieve what you're looking for, that is when God shows up. It is in darkness that light shines. In the beginning, God made the heavens and the earth, and the earth was from away. And God said, Let there be light. And light shines in darkness, and darkness cannot comprehend it. Child of God, when wickedness increases, God is looking for who to give more. <laughs> Someone, if you are the one, say, I am the one. Oh. Someone shout out the world, oh. Someone shut up the world, though. And then number two, look at this. But when oh, Makita Bahadaba, when you are different from the trend, the moment you become different from the trend, you position yourself for the more. The Bible says that the earth was wicked and everything around them was wicked. But the Bible says, but Noah was different. Message translation, Genesis chapter 6 verse 8. God liked what he saw in Noah. Noah was different. Noah was different. We know the trend right now. We know the trend. We know, you know the trend. Whether it's sexual trend, dressing trend, trend of Yahoo, Yahoo, trend of very stupid wicked trends that are, that are trending up and down. But anyone that is different from the trend, you look at the trend, you say, no, no, I am not part of this trend. I am not part of this trend of wickedness. Can I shock you? You don't know what you're doing. You are positioning yourself for more. Honey, my code, but lecturer that is not part of the trend of sorting, you're positioning yourself for more. My sister that is not the part of the trend of sleeping overnight in a mass as not your husband. You're positioning yourself for more. My brother that is fixed on his wife. I am not, you are not a big girl to one small girl. You are positioning yourself for more. Listen to me. Once you are not part of a trend, you know the trends I'm talking about. Because every trend in our society right now is iniquity. If you go to social media, nobody seems to trend until he's doing the wrong thing. If you want to trend as a woman, you must show press and bump up. If you want to stand as a man, you must do one stupid thing, one, one, one angry thing or the other. You must be able, you must have the capacity to talk rot and talk nonsense and then you begin to trend. And this is what happens. Once the trend hits, everybody joins the trend. But there are men and women that will look at the trend and say, this is not the kingdom of God. I will not be part of this trend. And God says, if I find a man who is not part of the trend, I will give him more. I'm not speaking to everybody. Listen, everybody is not telling lies. There are people that are not telling lies. Don't be deceived, though. The Bible says, Elijah said to God, They have killed all your prophets. I am the only one. And God said to him, Listen, Elijah, don't talk nonsense. I have 7,000 who have not that kiss power, nor power to fail. Listen to me. There are people that are about to get more because when the trend of negativity and the evil is on, they are saying we are not part of it. The Bible says, Come out from among them and be a shepherd. Can I speak a prophetic word over anyone? Who has not been a part of the trend of wickedness? Uh, let your boy enter by fire. Oh my God, oh my God. Uh, I have come to announce uh, your boy is entering your hands. 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 Listen, and when I look at the story of Noah, and this is my conclusion you cannot look like what God wants to destroy and receive more from God. Every time God wants to give more, there is something he wants to destroy. 
when God is giving more light, he's destroying darkness. When God is giving more money, he's destroying poverty. When God is giving more healing, he's destroying diseases. Uh, child of God, you cannot attach yourself to what God wants to destroy and expect God to give you more. That is why I must be different from the trend. I must not do what they are doing. If lying is the trend, I, Okoro, I will choose the path of truth. <sighs> and, and you see, the truth is this. If only we knew God's capacity to, to make more out of the one that is different. To make more. We are looking at, 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 at Noah. But go through scriptures and go through history. Everyone. I, can I say something? Even in the church. 2017, 2016, 2019. That was a trend. People were talking about Wisdom. Motivational speakers had taken over the church. Anyone that can remember. Everybody was a motivational. Everybody was speaking wisdom. And when they are speaking wisdom, most times, if you can remember, they were speaking against prayer. There was a time the trend was to condemn prayer. Who, who knows that time? Those that, are, those that follow church. They were condemning prayer a lot. But Papa stood out. I went and brought out his 2017 message he preached in this Odukoya's church, this man that just died recently, fighting of life, and I showed it to him. I said, Papa, as far back as 2017, 18, 19, I can't remember when he preached that message. You were talking about a fire revival that is about to come. You were praying, you were not apologetic about your stance on prayer. You did not close down your calling on prayer and your disposition towards prayer to fit into the trend of wisdom and gentle preaching and all of that. Because most of his friends that were doing that thing, they were billionaires. And he himself, he was just seeing some millions, he had not blown. Ah, of course. When he wants to teach, he can teach you and give you motivation. How many of us follow up on social media? Those of you that followed him those days, be, be, before you sleep, night thoughts, all those things, he can, he can conjure motivational speeches. But he stood away from the trend. Right now, the one that was different from the trend has become the trend. You don't understand. When God finds a man that can be different from the trend that is not in alignment with his will and purpose and the man is different from the trend. When he finds a man, he makes the man the trend. You don't understand. He makes the man the standard. Right now, everybody is trying to replicate NSPPD. You can copy the style. You can copy the results. When the price was paid was when he stood, uh, he stood different from the trend. Which side do you belong to? Are you part of the trend? Or you're against the trend? Now, child of God, when God begins to show you what's about to happen, He's about to give you more. Oh, Mataba Roko Pasadaba. Child of God, oh, Matiya Namakaba. Lay your hands on your eyes. Say, oh Lord, open my eyes to see what is about to happen. Say, oh Lord, open my eyes to see what is yet to happen. Why am I not praying this prayer? Say, oh Lord, open my eyes to see and know what is yet to happen. Noah was on his own and God came to him and said, I'm about to destroy the earth. Go and build the ark. Don't take your revelational knowledge for granted. Some of you, the kind of message you are hearing in this church, you've never heard this since you were born. Some of you, on the next people, you hear word of knowledge you've never heard before. And Papa says something on Thursday, I can't forget. He says, A new revelation begs a new level. Whenever God begins to show you a revelation and a knowledge, a revelation that's beyond your knowledge, God is about to give you more. And so that is why some of us, even though you're students, when you read your book, you are thinking like a professor. You are reading the book, and you're not just you're not just assimilating it, you are criticizing what you are reading. I don't know if you know what I'm saying. Because there are Listen, you are not just a student, you are a professor. So that you have not given you your wig or your gown. As a, as, 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 as a staff in an office, you are not just, they give you one work, but you don't just know how to do that work. You know how to do even what the MD does not know how to do. If God is revealing to you what is beyond your pay grade, what everybody does not know, God is about to give you more. It's not just a prayer matter. Listen, 
God, listen the Bible. God is generous enough to his children. He says, shall I do anything on the earth if I do not reveal it to my servants, the prophets? And we are all servants of God if you don't know. Listen, the Holy Ghost is there to show us what is to come. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are, and if you know anything about the Spirit realm, the Spirit realm does not have time. We are the ones that dwell in time. And so if you're led by the Spirit, the Spirit can take what will happen in 10 years time and deliver it to you in time. And you begin to prepare for it. So before others hit it in 10 years time, you are already there. And when 10 years comes, they discover you are already in your mall, why they will not begin to ask you, how did you do it? I can't keep operating with knowledge of what has happened. I want to know what wants to happen. I want to know what has not happened. I want to know the next move of God. I want to know the next move of technology. I want to know the next move of, move of, of business or politics. Some people, if they told them, that I'll get anything called Facebook. They will say it's impossible. They will say it's impossible. But they did not know that as long as the word has been released. Can I show you where the word is? Is it Timothy? He says in the last days. He said knowledge shall increase. And men shall run through and flow. He said knowledge shall increase. And what has all these social media um, platforms done? They have increased knowledge. The war in, in Israel has always been there. But now you and I are telling the story as though we are in Israel together. What is helping us do it? Social media. Social media. NSPPD is a brainchild of what? Social media. And I want to tell you, you see all these cancer testimonies. We have been having it no more here. Since Papa has been doing this. Even here we had our own cancer testimonies. Well, before there was social media. But because the Bible says, in the last days, knowledge shall increase. It's an information age some people and that is one thing about papa papa has always been on the forefront of information when it was blackberry he was using blackberry when he became uh, whatever it was he became he went there and and but oh my god god please plant me where you're going plant, let me know it before it happens that's a channel of more for some of us we are so comfortable we are so we don't even care whatever is not true does not like kesera sera Whatever will be, will not be. If you don't now position yourself properly, you may be a victim of the change that is coming. And at this, 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 this one is sweeting me crazily. When you build capacity for taking detailed instructions, when you build capacity for taking detailed instructions, someone say, oh Lord, give me grace to be focused and organized. Say, oh Lord, Give me grace to be focused and organized. Can I shock you? Can I shock you? The person that is producing that reel that you're watching, I hope you know the person is planned it. How many of us know that? How many of us know that? Don't be deceived. Even if it looks there is a particular family that use the, themselves to do real a lot. It's not someone that's carrying the camera. When, when it's a camera that is fixed somewhere, you will know. But this one, you see a camera at human angle. At, like this one is facing me now. You will see a camera facing, and then the two people are doing what they do, and they are both looking surprised. They're not acting. And it's looking really in your eyes. Or that it was planned. They took time to take details of what they will do. They wrote it down. They discussed it. They followed the plan. The day you can build the capacity, that thing that is distracting you, someone took time to prepare it. But you is a distraction. And so you enter Facebook to read one thing. You end up scrolling through 50 reels. But you enter to read one thing. And your own ability to take down detailed instruction has been eroded because you're consuming what another person took time to produce. No comedian. I, I enjoy comedy. Of course, if you listen to me, no, I'm, I'm a funny boy. No comedian. Just wakes up and stumbles into anything. Even if they stumble into it the first time, they say subsequently they begin to plan it intentionally. The day you build capacity to take detailed instructions, I did not just say instructions. Some of us, even like in our WhatsApp groups in church, me, um, what do you call it? Departments, general WhatsApp, they will write something. You will not even read it. 
if you read it, you will not pay close attention to know what he's saying. You will just read it and gloss over it. Hey, they lost. Hey, they lost. When behind an day, Pastor Mike, you should know why you're distorting God like too much. You just gloss over it. You are not ready yet for more. You're not ready. If I paid attention when they were teaching mass, I would be a mass guru. But I told myself, when him, the mass, amen. See, today is is haunting me. It's haunting me. Once you, once, once my change is not direct, I give you five hundred. You give me two hundred. What you say? Bring two hundred. Let me bring three hundred. You have lost me. You have lost me. I, I will say, can we use calculator? I'm talking about myself. You know your own inability to take detailed instructions. It's one of our albatross. And the social media is making it worse. It's not social media's problem. It's your own problem. Don't blame social media. The people are making money. Make your own money. Create content. Content of Osrogaso. Create content. That's how you're watching someone. I, I, I got to the market. I, I want to make a farco. This is my apple. This is my banga. This is my this one. This is my this one. See me washing it. I have, don't you cook? Feed on yourself. Put it out. Let someone else watch you cooking. But you cannot do that if you don't take time to receive instructions, pen it down, take details on what will come in at what time. Those that pay attention to leaders are the kings. Though. The devil is in the details. And God came to Noah and said, hey, you are going to make an ark of gopher food. Room shall thou make in the ark and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. Make a quick instruction. Nobody has built an ark before, a ship, anything before. And this is, he has never heard it before. And this is the fashion which I shall make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits. What is even cubits? The breadth of the feet, uh, 50 cubits. Before then, did they know mass? And the height of the of the 30 cubits. The window shall thou make to, uh, to, to the ark and in the cubits shall. Oh God, this instruction is too much. Even Moses, the kind of instruction he received from the temple, from the mount, it was so much that God told him, make sure you build according to the pattern I was showing you. I want to have capacity. And you know, it does, if you cannot pay attention, you cannot, you cannot receive detailed instructions. As a husband is talking with the wife, the wife is not paying attention at all. Because what's in her heart is that thing she wants. And so you will say everything. And in the young crew, eh? By the time the woman asks you, ask yourself, what happened? How come what you're doing is complete opposite of what we agreed? I was bodily present but absent. Vice versa. It happens to men, it happens to women. Do you know that if you pay if you pay attention to leaders, they will not dupe you? Do you know they will not dupe you? Most times, greed and quest for fast money will close our eyes. Bet Niger. Oh God! Oh God! Oh God! That's the way they will be cutting you. And it will be cut, it will be cut, it will be cut. But can I shock you? There are people that this is what they do for a living. They know they they know they they know it so much that they are billionaires from it. And it's your money they are using to be billionaires. You don't know the details, they know the details, and they are deceiving you. Nah, it's here one thousand or one again, nah, just two hundred, just fifty. Onana, we keep a clean sheet. 59. Rashford will start with his head. 59. Anthony Marshall will cross, will give an assist with the cross. 59. You just 50, 50, 50, 50. You have the whole 20 naira. At least, oh, full gap. How much, how much like this? Onana, another five goals. Guys, ah, Onana has caught my Marshall. Marshall was buying off point, off point. 
and you say it's just 200 and next tomorrow we'll, we'll try again I went to the airport I saw cleaners doing bets I asked them how can you commit your future to what you're not in charge of how I can't commit my future to what I'm not in charge of is either I'm in charge of it or I'm sure God is in charge of it who is in charge of bets when you build capacity to strict for strict compliance with instructions get ready for more it's not just taking instructions you must Do you know that every big organization has a compliance department? Every big organization has a compliance department. What they are doing is to make sure that there was compliance with instructions. Why would your own life not have compliance department? That is why the Bible says, judge yourself that you will not be judged. Take time. Judge yourself. Did I do this? Did I do this? I said that to do this. This is my do-to list for the day. Did I do it? I said that to read a book today. Did I read it? Okay, I wanted to spend only 20 minutes on social media. How many minutes did I end up? Compliance. Strict compliance. Freedom, I've not started seeing your, your social media productions. I don't see them. If you are doing it, I've not seen it. I need to vet it. Because you can't be coming and giving testimony. I will follow you up. You know why I'm saying this? You will end up Setting goals are not attaining it because there is nobody that is watching over you for compliance. You are not even watching yourself. And you are waiting for more. God does not waste resources. Eh? God does not waste resources. God does not waste resources. The more that God gave those, <laughs> every time God has more, there is someone, is, there is a problem he's going to solve. Hmm. I'm going to the one that will be sweeting you now. When God remembers you, get ready for more. God does not remember a man without giving him more. It does not happen. It does not happen. Someone say, oh Lord, remember me. Someone say, oh Lord, remember me. The Hebrew word is zakah. When God remembers, the, the meaning of the word zakah is to take action. Is to take action. When God remembers a man, the Bible says, and God remembered Noah. That's Genesis chapter 8. And God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that were with him. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters are swayed. And God remembered Noah. When God remembers a man, get ready for more. But do you know that it is easy for God? Let me not say God does not remember someone that has, that has missed his way. But it's easy for God to remember you when you are in alignment with his plan. Who understands what I'm saying? If Noah was not in the boat or in the ark, we God remember him. He would have died with the other people that the flood carried. Am I right? Am I right? Go and read that scripture. It says that the flood was about five cubits above the highest mountain. I went and checked it. It is 20 feet above the highest mountain. I used my height to measure it. I am, no, no, I'm being sincere. Which don't laugh at me. I used my height. I am about, I don't know whether I'm up to 5'2 or 5.1. So, but I know I'm not, I'm not, I'm, if I'm on five, it is by miracle. You know, I just, I just said, imagine me and me and me and me. Five places. That's, that's the, the imagination. So, the water swallowed people to the extent that if you ask me five times, you will not see anybody. You will not see anything. Five of me. Just add me. One, two, three, four, five. That height, you will not see anybody. That's how much the water swallowed them. And unfortunately, that's how the vicissitudes, the economy is swallowing some people. The changes in the economy is swallowing some people. The things that are happening around is swallowing some people. If you look, you cannot find them. Because they were not in alignment with what God was to be. But you see, when you are alive, when you follow all these things and you say, and you are alive, what God is doing, God will always remember you. And the thing that is giving me joy in this thing is 
you know that if you look at the world, you will see the world has wasted, right? Everything has gone by, right? But I don't know why we don't give Noah enough credit. You are no more the child of Adam. You are now the child of Noah. The generation of Adam wiped away. It was only Noah. God had to tell him particularly. He says, through you and your children, you are going to repopulate the earth. So, whereas the whole earth was devastated, the whole earth, if, if, listen, if Noah was only occupying here, after the flood, Noah took over everything. Someone say more. Someone say more. You are not on the Someone shout more. Someone shout more. Show and shout more. Before everything happened, Noah was in a corner. By the time everything happened, every man on earth is a child of Noah. You don't get it. Me and you, Noah is our forefather somehow. Because God gave the clash. He said, it's through you. You are going to the populated yet. When God gives more, God does not give you small more. God gives you more that is everywhere. Oh, na makopa tayaba. I must speak it to everybody. But I've come to encourage that one who has been following God. I've come to encourage that one who has been aligning. I've come to encourage that one who has been losing things because you're following God. When God is about to restore, the restoration will cover all that you lost. God will give you what others cannot get. God will give you even what others lost. God will give you even what others lost. You are not getting what I'm saying. The more that God is going to give you. God will take from others. God will take from those that are called enemies of God. And God will give it to you. God will give you lands that is bigger than the one you think you lost. Oh my God. God will make your name a global brand. God will make your name a name that will sound globally. The more that God is about to give you. If your name can turn a years to come, generations to come, it shall still be referenced. Men shall still talk about it. That was how Adam and um, Noah got the whole world. That was how Noah got the whole world. Like the whole world. Like the whole world. Like, like everything. The animals his own. The birds his own. Everything. And God even told him, I will put your dread in the heart of all the animals. That means when they see you, they will say, Our oh, God. The same thing God did with Adam, God did with Noah. The same way God put the truth of Adam in the house of the animals, God did the same with Noah. God started a new earth with a man that was able to align and stay away from the trend and said, I will not do what every other person is doing. You cannot do it by your power, but the grace of God is available. Jesus has done this for us so that we can follow Him. And if we align with Jesus, hear me as I hear the Lord, the meek shall inherit this earth. You see this earth? This earth, they will hand it over to you. And it is the one that I ran up with this. The Bible says, Noah took. Noah took all the cattle that was with him in the ark. Noah made a sacrifice of all the clean beasts. Am I correct? He took of all the clean beasts and made a sacrifice. And God said, and the Lord smelled a sweet savour. And Noah, after building an ark, he built an altar. The interesting thing is that the ark he built, God instructed him to build it. The altar he built, God did not instruct him to build it. A grateful man gives to God without God asking. I want to allow that to sink in. A grateful heart. The reason why giving is difficult for some of us is that we are not yet grateful. Noah looked around and saw the devastation on the earth. I'm sure that he would have seen some floating bodies. I'm sure he would have seen some elephants that had that were de decomposing. And looked at himself and said, God, you saved me from this. You saved me from this. I didn't die like these other ones. Nobody asked him to give. God did not instruct him. You will build an altar unto me. 
the dimension shall be this, the dimension shall be this. God can give you detailed instructions to save you, but God will not give you instructions to thank him. Did you hear what I said? God can give you detailed instructions on, for him to save you, but for you to thank him, he will not give you an instruction. He will fold his arms to watch. Will this one thank me? Or will this one not thank me? But once you open up your mouth and bring a sacrifice to God, that is where the more, the real more, the real more will enter your hands. Because the Bible says, when God smelled the server, ah, for the past 150 days or more, the only smell that came to God was the smell of stench, the composing bodies. And then for the first time, if you have, if you have roasted goats here before, it smells different from, a, from an animal that's decaying. If you have caught rats before and the rat is decaying, you know the way it smells. But by the time you're burning goats or any of those animals, their smell is completely... It is sweet. It is even to human nostrils. It is sweet. Now, considering God, who had smelled the composition for the past 150 days, and out of nowhere, without asking for it, a smoke ascends to him and is a sacrifice from a grateful heart. The Bible says, God said to him, Hey, Noah, you have dealt with me. He said, listen to me. Never again will I destroy this earth. He says, I enter a covenant with you. Anytime I look at the iniquity of men, I want to destroy it. Once the rainbow comes up, I will withhold my hands. I will not destroy the earth again with water. But Noah, that is not even a thing. He said, Noah, listen, let me tell you. As long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest. Child of God, the more is actually the harvest. You didn't get it. When God told Noah, listen, I am going to give you harvest. No man plants a grain of corn and gets a grain of corn. Every man that plants a grain of corn, he gets a cob of corn. And if you get, if you plant a cob of corn, you're likely to get a field of corn. And God said to Noah, listen, uh, because of this sacrifice, uh, because of this gratitude uh, you have shown to me, I am going to institute a system of more. System of more. Not just a one-off. Child of God, you can get one million one off it is a gift of more but there is a system that every week one million enters the next week one million enters the next week one million enters it is a system of more god says to noah i am starting a system that more will always be in your life and he said to noah as long as the earth remains uh, seed time uh, is just a time uh, that is only to what they call seed time uh. child of god look at that scripture carefully uh. he did not separate seed from time uh. he gave it a name uh, he said it is seed time because at the time of your seed that is the only time that plays the only thing that time comes into play in is about six sowing that is a time that you sow the seed that is the only time that plays that's the only time that that's the only period time is allowed to operate but once you drop your seed time is suspended your harvest can come immediately after that one another one can still come because harvest does not operate in time. Harvest operates above time. According to God's calendar, time can control seed, but time cannot control harvest. That is why some men are reaping the harvest of what their father did 50 years ago. Your grandchildren will still reap it, and after they finish reaping it, another generation will come and still reap it. I am looking for 50 people that are going to say, God, today I will show you gratitude for keeping me alive. To the 15th of October, huh? I know some died. Huh? I will show you gratitude huh? for giving me something to eat. Huh? To the 15th of October, huh? I will show you gratitude huh? for healing my body huh? against all odds. Huh? I will show you gratitude huh? that my mind is still sane. Huh? Despite what I went through, huh? others went through it huh? and they lost their mind. Huh? But somehow, huh? I went through it huh? and I'm still standing. Huh? I will show you gratitude huh? for for, for saving my family huh? from that attack. Huh? I'm not speaking to everybody, huh? but there are 50 people here that say, Lord, huh? my gratitude belongs to you. Huh? I will not tell you what to do, huh? but whatever that comes to your mind, huh? may the Lord smell from your mouth. Huh? May the Lord 
me from your hand. When I say transfer, when I say check, whatever, can you raise an offering to the Lord that we say, Lord, is an offering of gratitude because gratitude unlocks my more. A thanksgiving unlocks my more. If I can say thank you, my more is coming. If I can say thank you, my more is coming. Where are those 50? Lift up your voice. Shout thank you, Jesus. Shout thank you, Jesus. Shout thank you, Jesus.